Good morning and welcome to Virtual Church here at PCMK. Summer is quickly passing by, so I hope you get out and enjoy this day. It's hot and humid, but hey, that's New York in the summer. We have a wonderful worship experience for you this morning, so I'm glad you joined us. It was nice to have two weeks off, and I appreciated the messages that we heard from both Will and Amanda Kosnick. Today we will continue our theme in this summer of love as we will reflect together on our love of freedom. I'm excited to share with you some powerful experiences I had while on vacation in Ohio, of all places. We went for a drive along the Ohio River east of Cincinnati and saw where Presbyterians and others were putting their faith on the line as they helped their fellow Americans escape slavery into freedom. So let freedom ring in your heart as you listen to the music Sing the hymn and listen to stories of some of freedom's heroes. Let us worship God. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is Sunday morning and time for worship. Good morning to each of you. It is my pleasure to have back with us this morning Joanna Mangiarda to provide today's special music. We have put our new microphones to the test this morning, and you will see very shortly that they have passed. To begin and end this morning, we're going to hear music that was written very early on in time. To begin with, a canzona by Giovanni Gabrielli. Gabrielli's dates are 1554 to 1612. He was the nephew of St. Mark's organist, Andrea Gabrielli. And indeed, in 1585, he was appointed to a permanent position there, which he held until his death in 1613. One of his noted pupils was Heinrich Schütz. I mentioned Joanna Mangiardo is going to sing for us. We're going to hear the Lord is my light, and the text is from Psalm 27. This music was composed by English composer Mary Frances Allitson. Her dates are 1848 to 1912. Interestingly, she was from a family of well-known booksellers who disapproved of her choice of career in the field of music. However, she was very wise and became very well known as a songwriter and her financial records show that she profited very nicely from her musical compositions. The hymn I chose from her hymnal was number 376, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, from the, for the, to the tune Heiferdahl. Again, this ties into our theme this summer of love. To conclude today's music, we will hear from Dutch organist and composer Jan Pieterson Sveilink. Sveilink was a principal figure in the development of organ music before Johann Sebastian Bach. He succeeded his father as organist of the Outkerich, the Old Church in Amsterdam in about 1580, and he remained there until his death. He composed much sacred and secular music but he was best known as an organist and keyboard composer. His noted pupils were the German composer Samuel Scheidt and Heinrich Scheidemann. Scheidemann's pupil, J. A. Reinkin, handed on this tradition of organ playing to the well-known and noted Danish organist Dietrich Buxtude. Of course, you'll remember and recall Buck Studer's name from a few weeks ago when you heard one of his solo vocal cantatas. Eventually, both Handel and Bach were influenced by this northern German style of organ playing. I hope you enjoy today's music.
kids, do you like money? Of course you do. Money helps you get stuff, and Romoco Toys has the perfect little pal to help you get that money. Introducing the all-new Piggy Bank. Piggy Bank is a little pig, just like the one on old Uncle Renan's farm. He's cuddly and playful, and best of all, he can help you save money. Here's how it works. Take a coin and drop it in the slot on its back. Then get more coins and drop them in. The more coins you collect, the more money you'll have. The more money you have, the more toys you can buy. Oh boy, just what I need, a piggy bank. Can I have it? Of course you can. Sweetness. I just need $29.95 plus tax. You need what? That's the price of a piggy bank. It's $29.95. Are you kidding me? Nope. So if I want a piggy bank, I have to save $29.95? Right. How am I supposed to save that money if I don't have a piggy bank? Well, I, well, if you, well, if you could, hmm, that's a good question. I suppose I could like, collect money in a copper jar. There you go, that's a great idea. But if I can collect money in a copper jar, what do I need a piggy bank? Well, because, well, I think, uh... I mean, I can think of a lot better uses for $29.95 than for a piggy bank. Like what? Like giving to my church, or missionaries, or to people who are helping the needy r right here in my community. Isn't that a better use of my money than a silly little pig? Silly? Look at him. He's a cute pig. He's got lots of room for money. And I know lots of people who, who can use that money. Matter of fact, I'm going to get some together for the church offering right now. No, little girl, wait, come back. Who am I kidding? The kid's right. There are better uses for money. Let's do some, some good, pig.
How's your summer going? This has been a most unusual summer, hasn't it? We're in the midst of a pandemic, so many of the joys of summer have been on hold or even absent. But baseball is finally here, sort of, and the weather has been good. It is still a wonderful time of year, and it is, go it is going by too fast. This is the last Sunday of July, and soon those cicadas will be making all their noise, and families will be starting to work on back-to-school shopping. That is, if they figure out if and when the kids will be back in school. Our theme for this most unusual summer has been a summer of love. Now, more than ever, we need to focus on love. Love for God, love for family, love for our neighbor, love for our country. Today, we will reflect on that love that comes from somewhere deep in the human heart, the love of freedom. Freedom is foundational to who we are as a nation, and it is one of the central tenets of our faith. But we don't talk about freedom as much as we do about justice and peace. Christ brings us peace. We work for justice, and Christ does it all in the name of freedom. Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In fact, it was religious freedom that drove the pilgrims here, and it has become a central tenet of our Constitution enshrined in the First Amendment. We sing, My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Our Statue of Liberty proclaims this is a land of freedom for all. And when we get to sing the National Anthem at baseball games, once again we will sing, For the land of the free and the home of the brave. We cherish freedom. We send our young men and women to fight for freedom. And you and I really do enjoy the blessings of freedom in many areas of our lives. But there's a dark chapter in our nation's history that is not completely over. Some call it the original sin of our nation. Of course, I'm referring to slavery, that horrific institution that ripped freedom away and kept it away from an entire race of people. It started with the arrival of the first slave ship 400 years ago in 1619. We fought a civil war over it. We tried to pretend it was over because, hey, black Americans were now free. But freedom for what? For many, freedom from overt slavery led to a life of poverty as uh, sharecroppers. Then Jim Crow laws, the great northern migration to work in factories and live in ghettos. Segregation, discrimination, redlining, and now the new Jim Crow, mass incarceration, and violence at the hands of police. We are not yet the land of the free and the home of the brave. We have made progress, and there have been many heroes in the cause of freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. proclaimed in his I Have a Dream speech that freedom would ring from the mighty mountains of New York, and my favorite, the curvaceous curves of California. Even from Stone Mountain of Georgia and from every mountainside, let freedom ring, he said. At his side that day and on many other historic occasions was the Honorable John Lewis. Among many other brave and heroic things he did, he led the Freedom Riders on their dangerous but powerful journey across the South. Freedom has not come easy. Freedom has been hard, but freedom is a beautiful thing. Freedom is God's plan for us all. Earlier this month, Elizabeth and I were in Cincinnati, Ohio to visit our dear friend Debbie Whaley. Debbie has preached in our church on several occasions, and she is now the pastor of the Mount Washington Presbyterian Church. During our visit, she took us out east on the Ohio River to see some historic sites on the Underground Railroad. I was moved and impressed by what I saw, and I couldn't wait to tell you about it all in this message that I was planning on, the love of freedom. In the little town of Ridley, Ohio, about an hour east of Cincinnati, I learned about two men named John, John Rankin and John Parker, one white and one black. Together, along with their wives and families, they helped freedom, free hundreds of slaves who crossed the Ohio River from slave country in Kentucky. The Reverend John Rankin was for over 20 years the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Ripley, Ohio. He was an important conductor on the Underground Railroad. 
In addition to preaching against slavery, he wrote letters to his brother in Virginia who owned slaves. Those letters encouraged and finally convinced his brother to move to Ohio and free his slaves. William Lloyd Garrison said of Rankin's book of letters that I purchased a copy of, Garrison said, his book on slavery was the cause of my entry in the anti-slavery conflict. They're powerful letters. He didn't miss mince words. His opening paragraph of the first letter to his brother contained these words. I consider involuntary slavery a never-failing fountain of the grossest immorality and one of the deepest sources of human misery. It hangs like the mantle of night over our republic and shrouds its rising glories. Wow, I wish I could write like that. So eloquent. Some other interesting anecdotes of his life were that Ulysses S. Grant, who was born in nearby Point Pleasant, Ohio, attended the school that he founded. And Harriet Beecher Stowe based her character Eliza in Uncle Tom, Tom's cabin on a story she heard about an escaped slave's journey from Reverend Rankin. Rankin and his family lived in a house high atop a 500-foot bluff overlooking the Ohio River. Legend has it that they put a light in the window to indicate it was safe for slaves to come north on their way across the river. Hundreds of slaves came through their home on their way north, one time sheltering as many as 12 in that tiny house. And even though Ohio was not a slave state, their neighbors were not necessarily happy about what they were doing. At one point, he had a $3,000 bounty on his head, and he and his son literally fought off a mob who had come to burn down their house and barn in the middle of the night. The passage of the Fugitive Slave Act only made him work harder. He said, disobedience to the enactment is obedience to God. No wonder the gravestone for he and his wife, Jean, has the inscription, Freedom's Heroes. Meanwhile, there was another hero busily doing all he could to bring freedom to the captives of slavery in that same little town on the Ohio River. John Parker was an amazing man who bought his own way out of slavery in Louisiana for $1,800. He moved to Cincinnati where he met his wife, Miranda Bolden, a free woman, and together they had six children. And here's the amazing part. One generation from slavery, all six children attended college and became teachers, and one became a lawyer. Parker also faced danger and opposition on his quest for freedom for his African-American brothers and sisters. He made dozens of trips down into Kentucky to bring back slaves. He kept up the work even when it became even more dangerous with that passage of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1950. His house in, or 1850, <laughs> his house in Ripley has been restored and is a registered historic landmark. These are some lesser known heroes of the struggle for freedom in this country and I'm, I'm proud that one of them was a Presbyterian minister. But there have been so many others. After learning these stories about the Underground Railroad, I wanted to watch a movie that had been on my watch list for a while. Harriet is the new movie about Harriet Tubman's life of escape from slavery in Maryland and her many trips back to free dozens of others. Freedom was everything to her. One of her famous quotes is, I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one of two things I had a right to, liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other. Harriet Tubman was a deeply religious woman. She loved God and felt God spoke to her through visions. She claimed the name of Moses from the Old Testament story of leading the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt. But she wasn't fond of passages from the New Testament that told the slave to be obedient to their masters, and I don't blame her. That's not what those passages were about. That was a different time and place, and there are many passages that proclaim release to the captive and the slave. Galatians 3.23 says, For in Christ there is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. We are all one in Christ. We are all equal and equally loved and equally free 
in Christ. The writers of the New Testament, including the Apostle Paul, use the metaphor of slavery to sin to describe the freedom we have in Christ. In Galatians 5, Paul says, It is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. This image of uh, freedom from slavery is one of the ways, many ways, the New Testament story builds on the Old Testament story. Both are stories of freedom. Freedom from something and freedom to something. In the Old Testament, freedom from slavery in Egypt was replaced with a covenant with God. A covenant that had benefits and obligations as part of following God's law. In the New Testament, freedom from sin is replaced with a covenant with Christ and a commitment to live by his law, the law of love. Love God and love neighbor. That was what we have been free to do. We are not free just to do whatever we like. We are not free to hurt others or even free to ignore the pain of others. Galatians 5 also says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. We love our freedom in this country, don't we? But we take freedom for granted. The freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution are ones we should always treasure and always defend. Sometimes the threat to those freedoms is not from foreign armies, but from within. Abraham Lincoln warned us with these words, from whence shall we expect the approach of danger? Shall some transatlantic military giant step the earth and crush us at a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe and Asia could not by force take a drink from the Ohio River or make a track on the Blue Ridge in the trial of a thousand years. No, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we will live forever or die by suicide. These are dangerous times in our country. This is a, there is a movement to take steps together to even greater freedom for our black brothers and sisters. We have declared that black lives matter. But how easy it will be to forget this moment and go back. There are some who would even try to return to an America where white supremacy was tolerated and even celebrated. We may take down a Confederate flag and change the name of a football team, but our young black men as free as I am to move about our cities and country and to make a decent living. We say we love freedom, and I think we do. We all do. We say we love God, and I know many of you have shown me that you do. We say we love our neighbor, and so let's enter anew into that covenant with God to show the love of Christ and work for the freedom of all God's children. We may not face the dangers that John Rankin, John Parker, and Harriet Tubman faced to bring slaves to freedom, but like them we are called to help us all move from freedom from slavery to prejudice and fear. We are called to join the movement for freedom and justice. We are called to join the Freedom Riders. We are called to let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania and the snow-capped peaks of Colorado. And not only that, let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltop of Mount Kisco. So the next time you hear our bells ring from our beautiful church building, Think of these words from that great Baptist preacher. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Amen. Would you pray with me, please?
Gracious God, we thank you for the freedom we have because of Jesus Christ. We are free from the bondage of sin. We are free from a legalistic approach to faith that would suggest we need to earn your love. We experience your love in Christ as a free gift. But that gift comes with a note to pay it forward. Help us to share the unconditional love of Christ with everyone you bring into our lives. Help us to work towards a community and even a nation that's, that lets freedom ring in every heart and every relationship. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good day. Maybe you'll drop by between 11 and 12 and bring your offering envelope. Elizabeth and I will be there to receive it and say hi and you can sneak in and take a peek at our new staircase and elevator lobby in the front of the church, the circle in the very front of the church. But if you can't make it then, we'll see you soon. God bless and have a wonderful day.